Hello everyone, we're going to go ahead and continue now by testing our posts uh, components. So if we come into our client, we have our SRC and our features folder has our posts inside of it. We need to test all four of these. But before we do that, let's go ahead and let's create a new issue. And for this issue, we're just going to say implement code coverage and we'll just say add code coverage for just tests. We'll go ahead and we'll submit this issue. We can then come in here and create a branch. Oops, create a branch. The create branch, copy this, paste it into our terminal. And now in here, what we wanna do real quick is just come into our package.json. And in our package.json, we can do something like coverage. And for this, we just wanna set this to be just with the dash dash coverage flag, something like that. Now there's other flags you could optionally add in here uh, into whatever this command is. Uh, there's one that is like this one that we're using for a test where you say pass with no tests. Uh, but in this case, we just wanna do this with our actual uh, coverage flag and we'll just say NPM run coverage now. And if we run this, we should see it runs both of our tests. It says they pass and then it tells us, uh, you know, how much left we have to cover here. What we want to do, though, is come into our features, for example, right click on the new posts. We'll say, uh, let's create a test for the posts, oops, the posts list dot test dot JSX. Go ahead and run that. And now let's come in here and let's do a NPM run coverage. So now it's going to run our posts list as well as the rest of these. And you can see here your test suite must contain at least one test. So we're once again running into that error. But I think this will work. So let's go ahead and let's do a get status. We can say, all right, uh, the coverage directory, we kind of don't want to include that. So let's go over to our git ignore and let's say, don't push up the coverage directory, right? So we'll say, add the coverage directory to that. Now let's do a git, oops, a git status, just like that. And now we can see the coverage directory is no longer in here. Our git ignore is now being modified. Our package.json is, and we also have this post list. So what I want to do now is say git add dot git ignore. And then I want to do a git add for the package.json. And now we can do a git status or both of these have been, uh, they're now changes to be committed. They've been staged. And then we have this one right here, which is our untracked file, which is still our post list component, because that's really not a part of this PR. So let's go ahead and let's do a git commit dash M added coverage, and then we'll do a git push. Oops, sorry, a git push. I don't know what my fingers are doing today. We can come up to our GitHub repository. Again, we have our code coverage right here. And then in here, uh, if we go over to code, if I full screen this, go over to code, we can do a compare and pull request. And then in here we can say added just coverage reports and then we'll say something like reports include coverage for all files that have oops that have a corresponding test file associated with them with at least one test we can't really demo this but what we can do is we can just run a npm run coverage real quick to generate the coverage report and then uh in here uh, we should hopefully just be able to do something like this where we can attach a screenshot to show people what this looks like. We can go ahead and create the pull request. Uh, sometimes I just like doing this so that, you know, if it's a feature where it kind of needs to be like visually demonstrated, people can see like what this looks like. So here we can see that's fine. It seems to be working. We do have the fail test, which is our post list right here. Uh, but the rest of this should be okay. So we can go ahead and do that. We have our PR here. We can come over to the file changes real quick. And then the file changes, we can see we have the git ignore, we have the package.json, both of those make sense, right? If you're looking at this. Uh, so that seems fine. Let's come back over to our actual PR. So in our conversations, and we can say, let's go ahead and let's merge this pull request, confirm the merge, and then we should be good to go with that. Now we can come over and we can do a uh, git checkout main, and then we can do a git pull from our main branch again to pull in those changes into our main branch. And now we should be good to create another issue. So we'd come in here, we'd create another issue saying, uh, create your post list components. We'll say like create uh, tests for post list component. And then I don't know, aiming for 80% code coverage or something. 
go ahead and submit the issue. We can go ahead and we can create a branch for this and create this branch, click on the copy, paste it into our terminal. And now we're good to go for the next video, right? So the reason why I like doing this, you might not notice it right away, but if you have like these components that are a bit more involved, you're actually gonna run into a lot of different edge cases that you don't really consider. Now this can either be an edge case like, uh, you know, the error here, where in like loading your post, something could go wrong. Or sometimes you like, you go to create the test because you see there's a gap in your coverage where you're not handling this error. And then as you go to handle this error, you notice that uh, like maybe there's something else that could go wrong that doesn't really fall into what this error is doing because it causes you to kind of critically analyze what your fail states are. You tend to realize that like there's a gap in your coverage where you say, all right, even if I were to fully satisfy this fail state right here, it doesn't really account for the idea that maybe like instead of getting a JSON object back from the back end, I get like a, I don't know, the Ikea parts to a table or something. So maybe I got to do some like handling for uh, in case someone sends me like an, an Ikea instruction manual. How do I make sure they don't like ruin my relationship? Obviously, that's not exactly what you know you could be receiving from the back end, but you get the idea. And in the post service, this was actually what happened to me while I was writing the code for this series. Uh, the post service ends up being a lot more involved because there's actually a lot of things that can happen when you're trying to delete something where like instead of having, you know, this delete post where you have a check if it's if the response isn't OK or check if it's a 204, you might end up in a situation like this where you have to do a bunch of other checks to make sure that everything is working as you would expect, because maybe you have like, a, you know, other errors that can occur in addition to uh, oops, the ones that you were expecting out of the box, like a JSON error. Uh, you might also have like a network error that you have to account for or something else. And like, it's not always going to be super intuitive what it is. So it's one of those things where you can't really expect someone to teach you what these errors are. Uh, it's really something where I think the best way to learn is to just like try it. And then as you're trying to write these tests for handling your errors or whatever, you might realize, oh, you know, Sometimes I don't get a 204. Sometimes like the, the servers changed its IP address. So I'm getting like a 404 or something. So maybe I also need to handle a 404 error here because I'm not really accounting for that error. Now that might not be true in the case of this delete post, but you get the idea. Like it really depends. Maybe you have like a, for your show post page, uh, if someone tries to go to a post page that doesn't exist yet, maybe you're not handling that one yet. So maybe you want to handle it in a better way. And also maybe you don't want to just throw new errors. Maybe you want to handle things in a more appropriate manner. Uh, and that's where I like having the code coverage because it kind of like, as I'm trying to increase the amount of code being covered, I tend to discover those edge cases. That said, usual discla disclaimer applies. Uh, if you're chasing for code coverage metrics, like I joked about here with 80% code coverage, it's okay to aim for like 80 something, but if you're aiming for 100% code coverage, you're almost always going to fool yourself into thinking that your code is more robust than it is. And you'll probably end up wasting your time as you're trying to like dig into a very specific error state so that you can get that extra 1% of code coverage. Uh, sometimes it's just not worth it. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. In the next one, we'll cover creating our post list component. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.